This episode is gonna be all about how to make a book the number one bestseller. So if you've been following along, you might've seen that the Business Playbook, which I released last October, hit Amazon as a seven times number one bestseller, which just means that it was number one in seven different categories. So I get a lot of questions about how to launch your own book on Amazon and how to hit that bestseller list. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this episode. I'll go through just some tips, some points, what we did, and hopefully it applies to you if you ever aspire to writing your own book. All right. So first tip is that you can't really fake this. So <laughs> I apologize if you were wanting to listen to this and think there's just some hack to, you know, like buy likes and downloads or something. You can't do that. Unfortunately, when I wanted to write this book originally, it was at the very beginning of Trainual, And pretty quickly after talking to some people, I got the advice that why don't you just focus on your career first? You can always write a book later, but focus on building some experience, focus on what's going to go inside the book before you focus on writing the book. And I think that's great advice. A lot of people want to rush and put a book together based on a really limited repertoire of experience. And so the first thing I would ask you is, is your resume a number one bestseller? Do you have the experience to back up putting into a book that you want to share with the world? And if the realistic answer, if you're being truthful yourself, and the realistic answer is, wow, I should probably go refine what's going to go in the book first, work on that, go do that. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. If you've ever read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. I think there's this whole part in that book where he talks about how he wanted to figure out how to write a New York Times bestseller. And so he went and interviewed a bunch of New York Times bestselling authors and they gave him some of the tricks. Of course, there's a lot more that went into building that network and he was extremely intentional about that. So this is not to say that you can't get very committed and make this happen for yourself pretty quickly. But it is to say that if you want to have a bestselling book, you have to have content to fill a bestselling book. So make sure you've got a book's worth of content. When I first started talking to publishers, one of the things they started interviewing me about was the table of contents that would go inside the book. And as I did my first couple calls with them, I was kind of scratching my head and thinking like, do I even have enough content? What I thought was an entire chapter, they pinged me with questions on and realized it's only a couple paragraphs when, <laughs> when it's all flushed out. So make sure you've got a ton of content to go into the book. That is my first piece of advice. So part of building a successful book launch is also building an audience that you're going to launch the book to because you can't just expect that your book shows up on the front page of Amazon or something and every single person buys it. You have to have some early fans, some people that are supporters that want to get copies and that can kind of teach the algorithm that, hey, there's something going on with this book over here. So a long time ago, I read this awesome book called Platform by Michael Hyatt. I really recommend it. Great book. What it taught me is that if you want to launch anything, if you want to launch a business, if you want to launch a book, anything to be successful, a new product, a new service, you have to have the platform, the audience to launch it. And so that book talked all about how artists and entrepreneurs and people that have these great launches, how do they do that? I'd recommend looking into that book. What you need to do is start to build a list of your own. It could be your customer list. It could be a lead list that you have. It could be a list of just the types of organizations that might like your content that you're putting out. It could be people that you find on on LinkedIn and your list could be followers on LinkedIn. It could be uh, followers on Instagram or some other platform, but you need a audience. If you want to launch a book, you need an audience. And so over the last few years with Trainual, we've been putting out a ton of videos, podcasts like this one, a lot of blogs, content. I've been guest posting in a lot of places. And all of that is building an audience. It's building a list that we were able to launch my book to. Owning this list is a really powerful thing. I'll come back to where where our list was powerful with our email list, but start working on building your list because you're going to need one if you're going to see any success with launching. Next, if you're not a writer, if you're not writing all the time, if you haven't written books before, then you might need help. So it's okay if you need help writing, if you need a publisher, if you need an editor, almost all authors have these things. And so to think that you're going to write a book that could be a bestseller on your own is probably delusional. I'll be honest, <laughs> because most people have help. Most people have a team that is helping them with the formula to write great books. How do you create a hook at the beginning of a chapter that draws people in? How do you posterize the lessons at the end of a chapter so that people feel like they have actionable takeaways? How do you infuse personality into the text so it's not so dry? You know, these are things that experts can lend to you. And so if you're looking for help, just email me or DM me on any of my social channels. I'd be happy to introduce you to some of the writers or editors 
that helped with my book, The Business Playbook, but definitely find help if you're not a seasoned writer, editor, producer yourself. Okay, so let's say you've been working on the book, the content's good, you've got the formula, you're building a list, and you're getting closer to the launch date. So the next thing you want to do is start to lock in some social proof. I did this on the back of my book. If you have a copy, you can see there's quotes from Montel Jordan, who if you've been following Trainual, we did the song with Montel. This is how you do it. And he's originally saying this is how we do it. So he's got a quote on the book. Damon John from uh, Shark Tank and FUBU has a quote on the book. Cameron Harold, who's another great author and the founder of COO Alliance. Clayt Mask, who's a co-founder of Keep and a CEO, formerly Infusionsoft. And Veronique James, who owns an amazing agency and was a past president of EO here in Arizona. Those people endorsing the book, putting their stamp on it, like, yes, this is valuable. Here's what I love. It gives you that street credit that you might not have by yourself. And so it's super important to start to find those influencers that you've built relationships with and cash in on some of that relationship by asking them to endorse your book. And you need those endorsements pretty soon in the publishing process because you need to publish your book and print your book in advance of it actually coming out anywhere. So start to lock in social proof. It's hugely important. As the launch date approaches, be mindful of picking a launch date where you have nothing going on, basically, so that your 100% job that week is to promote your book. So as the launch date approaches, you want to start to ping the rest of your network, friends, family, employees, any other influencers that you know, and say, hey, my book's coming on this date. When it comes out, will you help me promote it? Will you post about it on your social media? Will you email your list? Will you tell people? Will you leave me a review? All of those things are crucially important. Because like I said at the beginning, you can't just expect that your book comes up on the homepage and just starts to sell off the shelves. Your sales rely on teaching Amazon or teaching any other platform that, hey, there's some activity going on here. We should give it more exposure because people are buying this thing. And in a big way, that relies on your ability to get people there initially. So let those influencers and early people know, put the date on their calendars, help you out when it launches. All right, let's fast forward to launch date. When you're launching your book, the categories that you launch this book on are really important because you want to pick categories or subcategories that are the most relevant to the content in the book. And Amazon has a ton of categories. So you can be diligent and do some research and figure out where your book fits among the other books on there. But picking the categories gives you the best chance of being a number one bestseller in those categories if you're doing it right. And so for Trainual, you know, there was the small business entrepreneurship categories for my book. There was the technical writing and instructional kind of design categories. And so we came at it from a few different angles. And we're fortunate when we hit number one, one on seven of these different categories, but do the same kind of research and figure out what's right for you. When the book launches, launch day, tell everyone. So this is where your list comes into play. Again, with Trainual, we had been building our list for years and years and years. So having close to 100,000 people on the list was a really good thing when we sent out the announcement that we've got this book and we'd love them to be the first to know about it. We also did a price promotion. So price is one of those things that you can play with a little on Amazon and change it week by week. On your launch week, you may want to do something like we did, which was to make the ebook a 99 cent download. And by pricing it at that level, what you're doing is optimizing for the quantity of purchases. You're not trying to get rich on royalties. I don't think many authors are trying to get rich on the royalties because they're minuscule. Writing a book is really about creating authority and exposure for you or for your brand. And so by putting the price down, you're maximizing the number of people whose hands it will get into. And that was a lever that we pulled. And then there's also the promoting it on other newsletters and getting features and getting your book on lists. This is a PR effort. And so something that you can really plan for in advance of your launch is starting to get relationships with reporters and blogs and other companies or people that might give your book some exposure. And so when our book, the business playbook was featured on entrepreneurs like books of the month and for entrepreneur magazine and that sort of thing, those were relationships we had been working on months in advance that finally came to fruition and gave us an additional sales bump. And then the last couple things you can think about doing is depending on your business model, you may actually want to drive paid traffic to your book. So Amazon has advertising on there that you can sign up for their platform and drive traffic to your books page. You can also drive traffic from outside of Amazon. If you do any kind of Facebook or Instagram ads, tell people, find a cold audience and tell them about this book and do the math. If you can get a customer to buy a book for less than they're paying for the book, then you're printing money. Keep doing that. It's an amazing way to get traffic 
traffic and to get new customers, new eyeballs on your book. But what you're seeing through this is there's no magic shortcut. There's no easy button for trying to get your book to number one. It's got to have great content that's useful for people. You've got to invest time in building an audience and building relationships with influencers and customers and people that can help spread the word. You need to have a wave of people that are willing to do reviews and make purchases and spread the word on their network when the book comes out. You can toggle a little with price. And then it's a PR and an advertising game to get your book really some momentum beyond your launch date. Because what good is having a number one bestseller if no one knows about it the next year? You know, really what I'm after with the business playbook is that we have more sales this year than we did last year in our launch. And hopefully we have more sales two years from now than we do this year. Because a great book that is evergreen, that's timeless, really should compound. It really should snowball. And the exposure should just keep getting out there. Just like the E-Myth by Michael E. Gerber, which he wrote the, the forward to my book. And you know, 50 years after writing the original copy of the E-Myth, it's still on all those top lists. So I think that's something we can all aspire to. And if you are working on your number one bestseller, let me know if any of these tips were useful. Just send me a, uh, a message on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Can't wait to hear from you.